Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, we got a very important video where I'm going to analyze Christina Freeland, the Canadian government's Minister of Finance, responding to a reporter's question about the illegal arrest of David Menzies. I can promise you that this video will showcase some very disturbing things about this person's response to a very tough question. I'm going to use some of my training in behavior analysis, studying how humans uh, respond to stress and indicators that could reveal truth or deceit. So I think the best way to start is I'm going to play uh, the clip of Christina Freeland responding to uh, a reporter's question. And then I'm going to stop the video at certain times and give you my analysis of what's happened. If you haven't watched the arrest of David Menzies, stop this video, go and watch what happened, go and watch my video that showcases why it looks like it's clearly a setup uh, to facilitate arrest by the Royal Canadian Mounty Police to protect a Canadian government official. It's mind blowing, it's blown up on the internet and I'm gonna show you how Christina Freeland responded to the first question. Join me for this crazy ride. Hi, Minister Nijud Amelis from the Canadian Press. Hi, nice to see you in Toronto. Yes. Welcome. Followed you all the way here. <laughs> um, first so first of all, do we see politicians respond like that normally? This looks like a child who is very nervous. Welcome to Toronto. She knows what question is coming. That is a smile of extreme nervousness. And she's trying to set the conditions of, look at me. I am so friendly. I am so kind. I would never do anything that goes against the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It's one of the fakest things I've ever seen. That smile makes me want to cringe, probably at a level 10. Uh, the fake friendliness is disgusting, but she's also, it's a technique where you try to, to create an alliance with the questioner. So if I act like I really like you by going, hi, thank you for coming, it's amazing. I'm trying to impose on you an obligation to be nicer to me because she knows there's a question coming and she's trying to influence the reporter to go a little soft on her. Let's see what happens and let's pay particular attention to lip compression and swallowing to see if she looks nervous. This question, I was wondering, um... What do you make of your security detail uh, arresting uh, David Menzies? So, um, do you see that right there? You could see rapid breathing. Also, if you look at the chest of an individual, when somebody is nervous, you'll see rapid breathing up in the chest and not in the stomach. This Canadian politician is extremely nervous about this question. The eye closing, hiding herself from it, firm lift press and pausing shows shows anxiety and nervousness. She doesn't really know how she's gonna answer it. I'm sure she's been told to try to distract, but right off the bat, this is the clearest indication of this politician being very unsettled with what's coming. Let's see what she says. I wanna start with what was important about Monday. And what was important about Monday, January 8th. And I'm just gonna stop you again. If you play that again, you'll see a deep breath and then a purse of the lips and talking. So she was asked a very clear question about the arrest of David Menzies, which happened when she was being asked questions by him. And it looks like her and her aide knew that it was going to happen. So that right there tells you this person has some feelings of guilt or shame or is very concerned about what happened on that day. And let's see if she distracts the Canadians with her answer. What was important about Monday, January 8th, was that was the fourth anniversary of a date that I think forever needs to be marked and circled in black on the calendar of all Canadians. Uh, it was a tragedy for Canada. Uh, Canadians were criminally murdered so let's let's stop here yes it is a date that needs to be circled in black but it's a date that needs to be circled in black because the royal canadian mounted police affected an illegal arrest on a canadian journalist who is asking this person questions and it looks to me and most observers that she knew it was going to happen but what is so disgusting and you have to ask yourself what type of politician tries to link an air disaster where innocent people died to the question that she was being asked. She was being asked a very direct question about the arrest of a journalist, and she uses a tragedy to try to shroud the issue in another tragedy. 
And for her to do that to me is the lowest of the low, the fake high, hey, the nervousness, and then to say, first of all, and then you can see her tone changes. She starts to talk slowly to try to bring gravitas to make it look like the gravitas was this day and somehow infer that the reporter was kind of uh, doing a disservice to the day by asking her questions. But you see how she tries to regulate after being very nervous by starting to talk slowly. This is a day that should be marked on the calendar. It is gonna be a day that's gonna be marked. It's gonna be the day that we saw the Liberal government arrest a journalist for exercising its charter rights. Let's see where we go. And I want to say to the families and loved ones of the people who were murdered that Canada remembers, Canada will not forget. And that's why I was in Richmond Hill. Marcy was there too. It's, it, it's too much, it's quick. Uh, watch the whole clip in its entirety. First of all, she says people were criminally murdered. Like, you can only be murdered criminally. She's trying to exaggerate uh, the gravitas of another incident to take it away from what happened. Canada will not forget, Canada will not, rem you know, to me, that's just theater to try to make it look like Canada will not forget them. And by inference, she's trying to say, you asking a question about the arrest of the journalist is you taking away the focus from where it should be on the criminally murdered people. And it's disgraceful because she's using their suffering to mask her own government's culpability. And finally, when you see that she goes back and says, and what's her name, her assistant, um, Marcy was there. That's another psychological tactic. So what she's trying to do to the audience is say, and Marcy was there. And so by virtue of Marcy being there, it's kind of infers there was a witness there that shows that uh, I didn't do anything wrong. It, it, it's, it, it's, it's clear evidence of guilty thinking to essentially say, it's like your child would say, oh, Susie was there, so she knew that I didn't do it. Like, it, it's very manipulative and, and quite amateur, actually. And I can't say how, how disgusted I am by her linking the tragedy to the question. Let's go on. To show that this is a Canadian tragedy, that Canada remembers and Canada will not forget. Um, on the incident, um, as you guys know very well, Canada is a rule of law country. Canada is a democracy. Operational decisions about law enforcement are taken by the police of jurisdiction. Quite appropriately, political elected officials have no role in the taking of those decisions. And that's why I don't have any further comment. Now, what I want you to pay attention to, so she was asked this very direct question and she spent a considerable amount of time talking about the tragedy in Richmond Hill that had nothing to do with the question. Watch her body language in terms of the answer, the amount of time it takes her to even say, quote, the incident. She can barely say it. It's because her when, when humans start acting like this, it shows that their nervous system is overloaded. When I'm telling the truth to you, I don't have to think about what I'm gonna say. It just flows right off the tongue. I've got a memory of it, I've got no problem. I can tell you what I had for lunch today. I can tell you what I'm gonna do tomorrow. I'm not gonna be hissing, sucking in air, stopping breathing. Also, the hands can be very uh, indicative of nervousness. And in this particular case, when Christina Freeland here starts to talk about the incident, watch what she does with the hands. She starts talking about the police. And then what she does is she puts her hands out in front of her like this. And so what she's doing subconsciously is putting a barrier between her and the police. You wouldn't do that if you didn't need to do it. Right? But you watch when she says, and the police were here and she's getting her hands out here. That is putting a physical barrier between her sense of self and what the police did. Take a look. To show that this is a Canadian tragedy, that Canada remembers and Canada will not forget. Um, on the incident, um, as you guys know very well, Canada is a rule of law country. Canada is a democracy. Operational decisions about law enforcement are taken by the police of jurisdiction. Quite appropriately, 
political elected officials have no role in the taking of those decisions. And that's why I don't have any further comment. Okay, let's pay attention here. She lets the cat out of the bag and anybody watching has to see that. Quite appropriately, Canadian officials don't have any role in the decision to charge. She's got her hands out here. You can see the evidence of guilt because she wasn't asked if she had anything to do with the charge, but she knows that she knew it was gonna happen. This is what I think is the proof. She's asked, what is your comment on the arrest of David Menzies? The Liberal government or any government official often comments about arrests that seem illegal or contrary, contrary to the Charter. You're completely within your right to make a comment on. If she actually cared about the Charter, she would say, hey, look, I've reviewed the tape. That arrest was unnecessary. A journalist was asking me fair questions in accordance with the Charter of Human Rights of Canada and should never be arrested for doing so. I have asked the RCMP to conduct an investigation to, to figure out why that RCMP officer interfered with freedom of the press. That is a perfectly logical and great answer, but she doesn't say that. She says, quite appropriately, the police do the arrests and the arrest decision has nothing to do with political uh, politicians. So I won't have a, com a comment. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your guilt. If this is a jury trial, everybody knows that she knew about that arrest just by virtue of that answer, which is completely ridiculous and shows that in her mind, it is churning with the fact, do they know that I was behind it? Are they gonna ask me more questions about it? And so she gives an answer to a question that was not asked. That reveals a high degree of stress, a high degree of deceit, and we should all be very, very concerned. Now, if you wanna follow this up, I'm not being political or bipartisan, but Pierre Polyev, the leader of the opposition, was asked a question similar in nature. Now, the beauty of what happened at this press conference was the leader of the opposition from the Conservative Party asked David Menzies the first question. And I think that was to show Canadians that he was gonna recognize the journalist who was illegally arrested to, uh, to ask the first question of him. And he's asked a question and David Menzies, to his credit, doesn't go into, hey, was it not fair what happened to me? He just asked uh, Pierre, what are you going to do to protect freedom of the press? Because it seems like the Liberal government is interfering with it, not even just by how they influence the CBC to cover topics they want to cover. But specifically, David Menzies could have leaned into, hey, the Liberal government minister had me arrested. What do you think? He didn't do that. He just asked about freedom of the press and Pierre Polyev, to his credit, doesn't use the incident to go over the top. He just indicates that freedom of the press is important to Canadians and that journalists won't be arrested if he's elected. So let's have a quick look at that. And uh, you guys let me know in your comments if you think I was right or wrong about some of the body language and behavior that we saw from Christina Freeland. Mr. Polyev, David Menzies with Rebel News. Um, Mr. Polyev, the Liberals use both a carrot and a stick to control journalists in Canada. The carrot is obviously government money, including massive payments to publishers and broadcasters. This corrupts their editorial independence. The stick is regulation, including censorship, banning reporters from press conferences, the CRA's journalism licensing regime and the CT, CRTC's new power to alter search engine algorithms. My question, sir, is this. Which of these carrots and sticks would you keep as Prime Minister and which would you repeal? Thank you. We are going to repeal C-11, the censorship law, which allows CRTC bureaucrats to secretly manipulate social media algorithms to promote certain information, demote other information, and censor certain things altogether. This is a form of censorship that exists nowhere in the democratic world. Um, Margaret Atwood actually said that this was creeping totalitarianism. This is Margaret Atwood, this is not a conservative, obviously not a conservative, but she is an artist, a true artist, who believes that freedom of expression and freedom of the press is necessary. We're gonna stop arresting journalists. It's outrageous for the Prime Minister to have, and his government uh, to have journalists arrested for ask, merely for asking questions of ministers and uh, of public officials. 
um, and we're going to make sure that the government uh, does not give to, use tax dollars to leverage news coverage in its favor. Right now, Justin Trudeau is censoring those that, that he disagrees with and trying to buy off the rest. And that makes, that undermines confidence among Canadians in the news media.